we are here today with Christopher Keene, who is a fantasy lit RPG type author with a book um, at the time of recording coming out the very next day, but at the time of um, going live for the interview will be out for, you know, a couple of months because time travel. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself and, well, I guess tell us about your new book. Right. Okay. That's fun. Um, uh, well, I, I live in New Zealand and uh, I'm a fantasy and RPG author, as you said. Um, well, I guess right off the bat, uh, my new book is um, fantasy and it is set in a kind of, you know, the classic fantasy medieval sort of world. Sure. Uh, but it's about um, essentially this fantasy world is parallel to another world where there's monsters. Uh, they're kind of like kind of demons, kind of monsters. Um, and uh, the idea is that in their world, they're what they call their spirit form. And so magic magicians essentially from a fantasy world can reach through, pull the spirits into their world and then put them into uh, special items like uh, oh. anything, anything from uh, a cape to a staff to a machine to other animals or even people. Uh -huh. And then... And then using those items, they can summon force that monster into their world. Uh, and uh, that magic system is kind of set up so that the, the monsters have different levels and uh, they're from different places of the, their, their other world. Um, they're called Malkai, so I'll just call them from Malkai from now on, just so I don't confuse them with demons or monsters. But sure. the idea is that the Malkai uh, possess the objects and... Uh, they, the objects transform when at the summoner's behest and it's a pact between uh, the demon and the um, summoner that mm -hmm. they create. So, I, so the items are called pact items. And uh, what's really fun is, you know, there are a lot of different things that the pact items can be and, uh, you know, playing with that kind of uh, basic mechanic of the magic system is what the book is, a lot of the book is about. Sure. Of course, there's, there's like a war and character conflict in the background. Oh, there's but, just a war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's really just like okay, there's there's conflict and you well you you'd think that you know when uh, there is people who can use monsters you know and they can summon them at the beast for battle. It's like yeah okay we're gonna have you know people fighting with them. Right. Um, yeah, so like you know if one person gets a particularly powerful Malkai then they're more likely to, you know, try and challenge other users and well, they call them callers in this in this book, but they're basically just Pokemon trainers <laughs> in the fantasy world. Oh, yes. Sounds super fun. Also gives a whole new meaning to the whole magical sword thing. Yeah, exactly. There is actually uh, a magical sword but um it, yeah, which is a packed item. It turns into a phoenix, I think. Yeah. Ooh. Quite a few um, but what's fun is that, like, if one of the twists I quite like using is um, when uh, people start turning, putting the, Mac, the, the sorry, the Malkai spirits inside their, themselves, and so they transform into the monsters. Oh, ooh, yes. Is this, like, split personality sort of a thing? Yeah, yeah, and we got, like, a, yes. yeah, we got, like, oh. a, a warrior that turns into, like, a dragon, and, yeah, good fun. Oh, I'm so excited about that. Wait, but okay. Mm. If they've possessed themselves, mm -hmm. I imagine that would make summoning a smidge difficult. Oh no, they they just their body transforms like the like the packed items. They just oh, okay. yeah, because like the idea is that the items themselves transform into the monster. Sure, sure. Yeah. So there's like a giant uh like you know. It, it's it's magic so that like this guy's cane turns into a giant snake and like you know just you know generic stuff like that but there's some fun stuff in there as well regarding uh you know people with different characteristics and even like animals that become packed items which is quite cool because some of the animals in the fantasy world kind of look like monsters themselves aha uh -huh. and so you're so, not actually sure what's which exactly one. You know, you can kill this monster thinking you've just but killed the Maokai, but it's still going. It's like, what? what's going on? Oh, it turns out it was just the packed item. <laughs> That's great. Super entertaining. Also, I feel like that would be very entertaining to do with my dog. 
No. Yep. There's. Uh, I think the main the main character gets a, a Malkai that's a dog. So there you go. Ta da! Yeah. Magic. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, like that's that's the magic system. Um, really, this like the 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 story is more about a brother and sister. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were, you know, separated at birth, even though they were basically twins. And the idea is that one was um, brought up in a kingdom that was kind of a bit harsh, a bit, you know, essentially the bad kingdom, the, the dark kingdom sort of thing. And the other, and she was essentially brought up to be hard and strong and tactful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was the other things that mattered most to her. And with the, the brother uh, was brought up in another kingdom where he was basically kind of, you know, privileged and behind the walls and you know so he's a bit naive and, he, and like you know he's he's knowledgeable because he's you know a, a, a student essentially but sure. the idea is that uh when these two characters meet and they're both because they're both uh, summoners and uh, pools uh they have both really different philosophies regarding w- the war going on and what is it how they should train Malkai and because oh. obviously that the naive sibling is kind of like oh no my Melka is my friend you know we we have a bond and and the <laughs> sister's like no he, it's a weapon you know it's going to yeah. kill you if you're not careful and yeah. it's it's like there's a lot of so yeah their, their characters are definitely um uh, determined a lot by you know their upbringing in that regard uh, even though they're basically twins but right, when they sure. make and the conflict between them is, is pretty fun and how they get manipulated and turned against each other. And it's it's one of those sort of interesting brother-sisters rivalry stories. So you've basically taken the standard sibling rivalry and, like, added monsters and mayhem and, you know, manipulation. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, it's uh, it's kind of the idea of they, they don't actually they don't even start off as rivals. They don't even start off knowing that they're brother and sister because they've been estranged for so long. Sure. It's more along the lines of uh, uh, the, the, the the conflict of the book, the ticking time bomb, so to say, is that the barrier between the two worlds is breaking down. So, oh. yeah, so uh, Malkai, who aren't, uh, you know, uh, essentially obeying a master or, you know, a part of a pact, are coming through and killing people, essentially. Oh. And so... Yeah, so it's not good. And so the idea is that the original, uh, the ancient summoners, the ones they, who created the world that sealed away these monsters, uh, they kind of split the uh, the MacGuffin, I guess you would say, that uh, <laughs> that sealed away these monsters into two and gave them to essentially both kingdoms. And mm-hmm. the brother and sister ended up coming into possession of both of those things and they have to kind of, you know unite and so the idea is that the idea is that they have to unite this object and uh but the idea is that one of them wants to do that to prevent the threat the naive one is like okay if we can just stop the threat where everyone's okay you know even though there's a war going on but the the girl who thinks that power is everything is more along the lines of well if i get this i can decide i can control these milk i can decide who comes out and who doesn't and so she has a bit, they have different mindsets on what should be done to solve this essentially inevitable catastrophe. Well, yeah, inevitable catastrophe on top of a war. I mean, what else could go wrong? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's compounded. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, usually, yeah, the difference is like between this book and the books that I usually write. I usually, I'm usually a pantser. I usually write off the seat of my pants. I usually, um, what's the word? I usually. George R. R. Martin would say um, Gardner. Yes. And, that's the word yeah. for um, whereas this book is the first book I've actually architected uh, uh-huh. and structured it from the ground up. So I made sure to pace each conflict and each, uh, you know, character interaction. So it was just, you know, just a tight little standalone book. Sure. Uh, and um, it was kind of fun looking at the mechanics of uh, characters and plot and being able to kind of, mess it all together sure. and which one did you enjoy more uh, i definitely enjoy uh the writing off the seat of my pants um it's one of those sort of you know there is joy to be had in architecture because you're like oh yes i finally get to write this scene that i've been planning for so long yes but but when you're in the seat of your pants i i i, I enjoy it because i feel like the emotion and the events are more raw and mm-hmm. I'm experiencing them for the first time as I go about it. 
So uh, yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting kind of point of comparison. Uh, doing one and doing the other. So if if you want to, it's also like the idea of that anyone who reads my stuff can go, okay, so that's what it's like when he actually, you know, plans ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh, interesting. I've done both. I'm not sure which one works better. So yeah, Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so tell us about your other books, because if this is a standalone and you've got, what, one, two series? I don't remember. I looked yeah, it up. I got um, another series called uh, The Dream State Saga. First book was stuck in the game, uh, lit RPG, and I wrote it on a deer because I was complaining about um, certain shows and certain books that I was like, oh, yeah, anyone could do this. And my mate was like, oh, yeah, you do it then. Fine. You know, go ahead. Be my guest and write one of these things. <laughs> so I did, and it was the first book that I got published because I got picked up by a publisher for it so oh, well done uh yeah it was it was kind of surprising and i only wrote the first book off the seat of my pants had no idea where it was going by the end um like uh, that i'm one of the few people that actually got a book deal before i'd finished a book mm-hmm. uh, um, and that's very apparently that's rare but uh then they were like okay you need to finish this thing and so they were like okay we're gonna knit one a series from you so you're gonna finish this on a cliffhanger I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then, uh, the next thing I know, it, I'm like, yeah, to write a sequel. Uh, okay. Uh, four books later. Well, I mean, you know. Yeah. There's more to explore, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, it's just it's always hard for me to like, you know, it's like, okay, now you need to bring out another book that you had not planned or not not thought of at all. Ah, that one is problematic. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I got through three of them. And I, I really, like, I enjoy them. I enjoy writing them because it kind of, it's like, it's like you know, taking a piece of paper and a gun and just, you know, just kind of just, just <laughs> spraying it with all my creative juices and it works. And, yeah. uh, and, I, and I really enjoy it because uh, I always say to myself, I have to write at least once one book per year. Mm-hmm. And so, so the Dream State Saga keep me honest in that respect. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. Is it a complete series? Uh, there's one book left. And, one book left. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've written it. It's, it's done. Uh, it needs some editing uh, and there's, there's cover art and everything ready for it. It's just um, my publisher wants to kind of build it up because uh, audiobooks are coming out soon. Ah, ooh, audiobooks. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so they're going to be releasing all the audiobooks with like all new editions and then hopefully that gets up enough interest for them to finally go, okay, cap, final book. Aha. Uh-huh. And then what? And then hopefully that series is over. I mean, Dream State, five books is pretty good well, for I'm a sure. series that you never have planned uh, to go anywhere, to, of ending, actually, when you first started. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's why I, well, now that I've got a publisher under me, I finally have the excuse to kind of go back and dust off the stuff that I originally wrote, um, which was major, mostly just fantasy. And this is a book such as that. Should be fun. Going to cause all sorts of trouble. Oh boy. Hooray. Yeah. Uh, well, who knows? I mean, so far the, um, online communities for fantasy, particularly young adult fantasy, because, you know, if your characters are young adult then your books generally go young adult, <laughs> That's the case in a lot of well, what that's when you got a publisher, that's where it goes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, they've been pretty good. Um, so hopefully, I get as good a reception for this as I do for uh, Lit RPG, the community. So uh, it's up to you, fantasy readers. <laughs> we'll do our best. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good fun. Um, so it sounds like you've done a lot of magic system exploration. Yeah. 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 I really enjoy uh, different magic systems, particularly hard magic systems, uh-huh. because because uh, it feel they feel grounded in my opinion. Like when there are rules and you know like consequences, they actually feel like they're you know more solid than just airy fairy. Anything could happen. Yes, although coming up with those rules, I have found is extremely complicated because you have to bend the laws of physics. 
Oh, yeah, but like, you know, the, the only real law of physics that hard magic systems have is generally cause and effect. You know, it's kind of the idea of, you know, you have something that causes something else. And if you can, you know, trigger that cause yourself, then you can apply that magic system willingly. But mm-hmm. if there are things that you can't control, that can be fun as well. Like, you know, if you're like, oh, my magic system is regarded by my emotions and I'm a very emotional person. And suddenly, oh. you know, that's that's always a, a good un- uncontrollable system. But yeah, uh, I don't know. It, it, like, like Sanderson, uh, obviously, if it's for Sanderson, probably, um, he uh, tries to, you know, relate his systems to magic. And I mean, I'm not a physicist, but <laughs> you're kind of like, you know, like, yeah, all right, you're stretching it. So I don't, I don't even try to pretend. I mean, to be fair, not a lot of fantasy authors actually do bother bother with. Um, physics mm. it's just you know it's too much work yeah I mean like I did a like I did a book uh, that didn't do too well I'm kind of gonna refurbish and self-publish it sure. and the magic system was symbol based so it was like the idea of like uh, you know you envision a symbol and as long as you can keep that symbol and that symbol alone in your head you can use the power associated with that symbol and the idea is that uh, it takes a great deal of concentration and people are like, oh, that seems really simple. And it's like, yeah, have you ever tried to keep an idea in your, like an image in your head for that long? Yeah, and, it uh, um, yeah. No. yeah, you need like to medita- meditate over it for a bit. Um, but the idea is that uh, one of the powers that it allows you to do is to move, um, what is it, the, well, the special weapons called side blades. And I use this idea that if you stab one of the side blades into the ground and push down on it, if the side blade couldn't go anywhere, you went up. And so people are like, oh, that's just ripping off um, Sanderson's Mistborn ability where he pushes on uh, metals. And I'm just like, I mean, you know, it's it's very similar, but, you know, the symbols are more akin to Fallen Alchemist, in my opinion. You sure. know. Sure. Uh, where they use, you know, uh, what are the transmutation circles to create mm-hmm. magic? Like that makes that that's a way better analogy. Just because it has one thing has push pull mechanics doesn't mean that you're directly ripping off another author who used push pull mechanics. Well, I mean, unfortunately, that is the way with um, all of us little bitty authors and then the big name authors. If they do something, it is law that it is theirs, even mm-hmm. though technically speaking, it's logical in many other places etc cetera, etc cetera. but yeah i mean you can adopt, yeah well you can adopt stuff from like popular authors and make it your own i think as long as you um give it your own flavor and right. yeah i i don't know i've seen i've seen so many adaptations of like elemental magic systems or ghost magic systems there's just there's so many that are kind of cliche at this point Mm -hmm. but you you know you don't if someone tries to do an elemental magic system you don't say oh you're ripping off avatar the last airbender i'm like they aren't they weren't the first to do it you know they've been around forever have you not played any you know games of the 90s or even before that it's like that magic system has been around forever so you know saying that you're ripping off avatar is kind of a bit you know mm, i don't know they just have better marketing yeah exactly it is it's when it comes down to it this this it's the spread how, how do you know these things the first time that you've were introduced to those things is where you assume it came from right. and so you, you assume it took it off that and it's funny because you're like <laughs> a lot of the people go into the sort of trouble of saying oh it's like this and like well actually that came first so it's more that's like this you know i have done that many times people usually look at me and go um what language are you speaking yeah yeah but uh, it's it's fine i it's just um it's just one of those uh things well, it's the evolution of the genre uh, yeah exactly. something relates to something else which then evolves into this and i mean you know look mm. where portal fantasy came from yeah exactly so well fun. i mean i mean i would even argue that some uh lit rpg is portal f- is the next stage of portal fantasy if you think exactly. about it it just happens to add all of that extra gaming theory to it and it kind of i don't know once again I, I quite like systems that are grounded uh in either rules or reality in some way or science because it does feel real when you are like okay so you're going through 
a portal but is it really a portal or are you just you know going into a game and games exist and virtual reality exists so you're like oh i see it makes a bit more it makes it feel like it, you know you actually get into that situation right whereas stepping into a wardrobe <laughs> I mean, you know, you can talk about the whole alternate reality, straight yeah. dimensional physics sort of. I'm pretty sure yeah. he wasn't thinking that far. Yeah, no, it's but yeah, exactly. It's like the idea of it's like, okay, so I I can get alternate dimensions. Why a Woodrope to get to them though? I mean, eh. <laughs> do you know? I never actually considered that. Yeah, no, well, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a, it's a small detail. Well, the only logic I can come up with is because there were coats and yeah. it was cold. Yeah, maybe. No, okay. Interesting. Yeah, that got nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hmm. Oops. Okay. So as far as the whole process goes, how in the world did you manage to find a publisher before your book was finished? All That's- right. Uh, I mean, it's really a state of being a little dishonest. Um, you know, you, 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 when you're submitting stuff, you only submit the beginning and, uh, a general outline. And so, um, you know, they like the beginning and they like the next 50 pages. So they were like, okay, we want the full book. Ah. And, and so I was like, okay, so I've only got, you know, that, the stuff that I've given you. So I had to kind of dash away and I write like 20,000 words in a couple of nights to get that wow. finale to them. And they were like, yeah, it was, uh, I'm a pretty ferocious writer when I get around to it. But um, (laughs) uh, but the idea is they didn't like the ending because obviously it was rushed. So the acquisitions team were like, okay, we're going to work with you to get this ending the way we want it for a series. And I'm like, sure. So in a way, Dream State Saga is more their baby than mine. (laughs) Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it's an interesting progression. Being completely self-published, all of this is like the other realm for me. Mm. So I'm fascinated anyways, any way it comes about. Yeah, it's, uh, um, I, I've, I've been, uh, I'm going to do some self-publishing, I think, in the next few uh, years. But I've uh, I've got one lined up for the next um, uh, Mark Lawrence competition. I forgot what it's called, SB, SP. FBO, I think. Have you heard of that? It sounds familiar, but I haven't heard of all of the details. So I no, well, uh, I've been meaning to submit one for that for a long time because it's quite, you know, good for fantasy authors who are up and coming. And so, sure. plus, plus, you know, once, uh, as I said, I had a, a book that um, didn't do too well. So it was like uh, something that I'm like, I'm going to get the rights back, make mm-hmm. it my own. You know, mm-hmm. Give it, a, give it a whole new coat of paint, and then send it into this competition. And it's already had, it's already had the benefit of free, of free editing, and that's, that's the, that's the best part of having a publisher. I think it's the free yeah. editing. Yeah. yeah, I love. And the free cover art, and the free marketing, and, and the free publicity. <laughs> so you know, like all of the stuff that that the writers have a hard time doing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I've got to say, it's, uh, it's, I, I underestimated how much that stuff is useful because, mm-hmm. because I mean, I've, uh, I've got a book coming out, uh, tomorrow and it's t- tomorrow. I, I was trying to, on the, on the 20th of, you know, uh. yeah, but anyway, I, and no one would know about it unless like, you know, my publisher had kind of, you know, gone out there, put some stuff out there put my feet to the fire a little bit to be honest get, get me some art readers yeah those are useful all of those things <sighs> yeah you okay See, I, i'd like a publisher just for all of those things it's like mm. the editing and the cover and mostly the marketing yeah yeah it's uh it's fun to write uh but everything else can be a bit of a bummer i mean mm-hmm. i guess that's what makes it you know, that's the difference between being a writer and an author is the author actually, you know, well, in my opinion, the author actually goes ahead and tries to publish and get their stuff read by other people, whereas writers can write stuff and not oh, really. That's, a, that's about an it. interesting thought. I, I mean, that's perfect my, sense. Yeah, that's just my 
personal distinction because i mean author by definition is someone just authoring you know like it's someone just creating something but in my opinion writers and authors are kind of like you know you don't call brandon sanderson a writer you call him an author generally and it's like why it's like well because you know he's known as an author that is an interesting distinction and i haven't thought of it before but it does make sense yeah but like at the same time it's like it yeah I mean, it might be a bit elitist saying that people who do write and don't publish aren't authors. That's that's not what I'm trying to say. I no. guess what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that... In I, the world of so publishing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, you're unfortunately, um, for the self-publishing, you're going to have to do all of that. Yep, I'm uh, doing a course on it. Oh, uh, yep, of course. course. Yeah, a publishing course, uh, and I've actually got... Uh, to do a zoom meetup because of this COVID thing in uh, a couple of hours. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Well, that's what I've been doing for the last several weeks, actually, this publishing course. It's a full, full thing. Got to get into it. Wow. So I'm learning all the, all the background details of how to be a, a you know, proper publisher. And I might even get one, might even try and get a job. <laughs> God forbid. Ooh. Ooh, jobs are nice. For the um, starving artists out there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I mean, that is the thing about being an author, isn't it? It's like, you know, it's not the, or being an author is not the best paying job. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you can, if you can lasso one of those big publishers and, you know, actually get a good income, it's like. Yeah, it's uh, almost impossible. I once, I once heard it described as my overnight success took 20 years. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. And, well, that seems accurate. Oh, well. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of funny, um, you know, I watch those Sanderson lectures and he always says that you're not here to learn how to write a good book. You're here to learn how to become a person who can write good books. And uh, the way he says it was interesting because, you know, like relating to the 20 years thing, it's like, you know, once you've got those skills, uh, built up those skills, you're more inclined to, you know, have that success. Oh, interesting. Huh. Who'd have thunk? Yeah, okay. well. <laughs> huh. All right, I'm going to move a little bit sideways because. Fair enough. Because we can. Um, for writer types trying to get into your genres, and you can pick whichever one you like, the more lit RPG or the hard fantasy magic system, traps to avoid. Uh, d when, when writing? Um, uh, I guess... Uh, when you have written a few books and you find out what you, uh, I mean, that's, that's maybe that's too, too ahead in the future, but you learn that you end up using certain plot devices or tools or tropes as kind of a crutch uh -huh. and uh, try and discard them. That's my opinion. If you want to write something that actually challenges you as a writer and you challenging is the best way, in my opinion, mm -hmm. to, become a better writer is challenging yourself not just to write new things but also to take on feedback right like, you know, it can be a bit of a challenge to take on feedback i find that the the best writers are those that are willing to be open to new ideas and you know criticism and stuff mm -hmm. and so anyway when you uh you know have all that down and you write a few books then you realize you've been doing similar things like you know having a maniacal villain or you know uh, like if you're reliant on a magic system or if you're reliant on something that is like really, you know, heavily involved with mm -hmm. some sort of trope or, you know, like, oh, it's another war with swords. It's like, okay, try and try and mix it up a bit. Try and take the tropes that you know that you do too much and niff them and then try and make something of your own. And that's what I that's what I would that's what I would tell them to do because Interesting. I, I did that recently. <laughs> Yeah, the hard part's probably figuring out which ones you use as the crutch. Yeah, well, I, I realized that I used the ones that I mentioned. You know, I always had, like, a villain. I always had a magic system. I always had uh, some sort of giant twist that I was always building up to. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't need all of that stuff. I could just write a good character-based story, maybe some sort of romantic adventure. And I was just like, yeah, I'll do that. And that was the funnest writing experience I'd had since I started writing was – trying to not do mm. that and so it, it's like a magic system you know limitations yeah. and consequences you know sure. now that 
they're the things that make stuff grounded and fun, I find. Oh, that sounds super fun and also really hard, but mm. also super fun. Yeah, well, uh, the, the thing that makes it fun is the difficulty, it's the challenge. Yeah. Because yeah. when you're doing the same thing over and over again, it becomes mundane, and you're like, oh, I've, you know, I've got in five stories now where the villain is laughing, and you know, and there's magic, and there's rules, and there's a guy with a sword. Oh no, this is happening again. Yeah. Although to be fair, I do know that a lot of the readers like things that are consistent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like, but you know, you, you can mix it up. You can right. uh, try and change it up a bit. Like, it's funny though, because like by the time you get published, sometimes the things that you've tried to subvert are become the norm almost. No. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like the, I've, I've always talked about, um, the issues in fiction when it comes to, um, subversion and irony even, because there's sometimes you've got like, uh, you've got genres that are particularly, designed to play off the irony of certain tropes you know you've got like grimdark for like the morally gray characters you know if you've got uh what is it comedic fantasy which is always you know good for parodying like certain tropes um but you know at the same time like at the moment i even feel that sincerity you know is kind of a, it's almost a rare a rare thing where you can subvert something to create a message of you know sincerely without actually you know trying to drive home the idea of like this is trope is you know what we used to do and like oh. uh, I can think of several books right now like um, the classic one is Dresden you know uh, Dresden has so many meta things on what is it you know like popular culture and stuff like that and kind of him he it, like it, for how many dangerous situations he puts himself in and he seems to only take it half seriously <laughs> and so, which is great because he's a great character and yeah. you want him to be a bit more lighter than usual but you know sometimes <laughs> you need to show the trauma and i think he, he i think they do that better in the later series yeah God, i don't I hope i'm not i don't come off of mocking dresden dresden's great so <laughs> I didn't take it that way. I think it's just yeah. the evolution of the series took a bit. Mm -mm. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I quite like something that's a little bit more sincere and a little bit. I'll, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, in the book that's coming out, uh, what is it, tomorrow, it's uh, there's a scene where essentially, you know, you've got the, the, the classic image of a knight with a sword facing down a dragon, right? Mm -hmm. But I But I also say that, okay, so we've got a, a warrior who's the, the, the one of the main characters who turns into a dragon, right? Ooh, yes. And so, and so I decided to flip it around by making uh, the, the, war, the the knight in the shiny armor, he's being himself being possessed by a Malkai. That's like the evil, one of the eviler ones who are trying to kill everyone. Oh. And so, you know, you take that image and you flip it around and you got the dragon, the good guy, and the knight, the bad guy. And suddenly it's, I'm like, ah, okay, there you go. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, I've always wanted to see that one flipped. I, that one in particular, I don't know why, but I've always wanted to see it done the other way around. Yeah, yeah, I, I always, in, uh, always enjoy like flipping stuff. Like some of some of the ones that can be hit or miss, I find are like you know having some sort of competition or right. tournament or something, and the, the 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 main character loses. That's like one that can be really kind of hit or miss because you're like, okay, so you know this character rock didn't really come to much other than oh, you've gotten a little bit better at this, you know, right. thing you've been keying in. But hey, at least you know your expectations were subverted because he didn't win. It's like uh, it's not a good enough reason. No, you have to have something else going on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, th those whole subverted expectation things don't always work out as we've learned recently. <laughs> Yeah, darn. Oh, well, I mean, it's worth a shot to do the experimentation. Sometimes things work that you wouldn't expect to do, which yeah. I guess is rather the point. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, I, I do like it in that it's kind of like when people click on to familiarity, mm -hmm. but they're still engaged in the story. Mm -hmm. It's a really hard, it's a tightrope. I tell you, trying to get that, you know, balance of, you know, nostalgic imagery and, and, and tropes and stuff like that and going, ah, he flipped it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, things to work on for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
well i don't know i i like i was asked um by another um, interviewer if i was planning on doing any sequels for this and the idea that i've been playing with is uh taking the magic system into the future and having mm-hmm. like machines and mechanical devices and weapons and like you know like mecha being possessed by demons and then like taking on the characteristics of demons and having you know like and it's, it's like it's like you know like some sort of demon punk sort of style where like people are kind of you know, you know set in the future with mecha you know it's like it's that that there is for me i was like that, that's a really cool idea that's an image but because this is set in medieval it'd be almost a completely different book with completely different characters. It's just the only thing that's the same as the magic system. It's a follow-on in the same universe? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have no idea what... I mean, there's a proper name for that, but I don't actually remember what it is, so... Yeah. um, I think... Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to see, like, different civilizations react to magic systems? That'd be so entertaining. (laughs) Yes. So entertaining. All right. Well, it's been super fun talking with you. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, other than uh, if you're listening, if you're listening to us in the future, which you would have to be because it's going to be in the future when it releases, uh, you know, give uh, War of Kings and Monsters a shot. And if you're interested in comparing uh, an architect story to a pantser story, yes, then read Stuck in the Game and get back to me and tell me which one you think is better because I'm actually <laughs> fascinated to see which of the two, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. Works. Yeah. Huh. That is an interesting thought. I shall have to let you know. I will, I will see what I can do and let you know. Well, that was a uh, great fun talking with you. I love the hard magic system and also causing trouble with subverting tropes because causing trouble. Just your, you know, average day-to-day activity. That's fun. Yeah. All right. Well, have a fantastic day. Um, good luck with the last day before the next book. Mm. Really. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you around.